Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Big Vale, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about different kinds of blimps and when to use them. And when I say different kinds of blimps, obviously I'm aware there's only one kind of blimp, and that's the Battle Blimp built in the Seed Workshop. But I'm talking about what kind of content you can put into that blimp and when to use each different type. So I'm talking things like Yeti Bomb, so Double Yeti, a Valk and a Barb. It could be Blizzard, so four Super Wizards, five Barbarians. It could even be Super Archers. We'll look at any viable possibility that I can think of. And I'll show you little snippets of what happens if you use different blimps in different situations. Anyway, let's get straight into the video, guys. I'm excited about this one. Alright, so we're going to start off with this base. And the first attack that we're going to focus on, or the first blimp, sorry, that we're going to focus on, is Blizzard. So we're looking around for Blizzard value. We know what Blizzard does. It's four Super Wizards, five Barbarians. And the, the sort of idea of it is that you go for areas that have got easily accessible from a short range troop um, defenses. So key defenses, uh, especially if they're clustered together. So you can get that chain damage from the uh, Super Wizards onto structures that may be out of his reach ordinarily. So if I'm looking at this base immediately, I'm looking at value and I've got to say if I could get the blimp to land here that would be godly so I'd be able to take out the clan castle multi inferno the queen the town hall wizard tower maybe that other wizard tower there probably not the single inferno but you know we've, we've got a real good solid foundation there just from a blimp only problem with that is guys how on earth do you get a blimp there it would take additional spell investment to do it and a lot of additional spell investment and a lot of luck too so your blimp would have to ultimately path from probably about here and what that would mean is guys that you'd have the coco hound initially that would tank for the air defense the scatter shot for at least a few seconds anyway but then you've got beyond that you've got plenty of room for seeking air mines lots of dead space in the base You've got the Queen, you've got the Multi Inferno. Um, I mean, where's the Sweeper pointing? Sweeper, not such an issue, but you've got potential for a lot of traps, maybe even a Tornado Trap, which would be even more devastating right next to the Queen. So that's a risky approach. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's definitely risky. A slightly more sensible approach would probably be, probably be to get the Blimp to land here. If you could get it to land here between the Eagle, Air Defense, Arch Tower, Dark Elixir Drill, Wizard Tower, Builder Hut, Multi Inferno Expo, and another Expo plus the Bomb Tower. That's a lot of potential value that you could get there. Imagine that bit of the base is carved out. You've got a fairly nice path to look at here. So you've got the L shape going that way beautiful you can even refine that a little bit if you wanted to follow it up with a suey but we're not going to talk about that today we're talking just about the actual blizzard itself so let's rock and roll with it guys let's test this blizzard out and see if where i plan to send it the the preferred route is actually the right one can we get the right value with it they blimp in of course the coco hound always in front of the blimp if you're trying to get any kind of real range on it. Drop the Invisi. I, I prefer to pre-drop. I mean, call me cautious, but it's just my preferred way of doing it. Okay. Looking good. The wizards are shooting at walls for some reason. That, that makes no sense to me. There was no reason to do that, but... I, I mean, look. We took down... We took down a lot here we took down what round here all round here i'm just cutting it out with my pen we took out all of that with a blizzard that is a huge chunk of the base and if we zoom out now you've got the path that i defined so you've got the path beautifully built here the town hall's on route so i mean that kind of blizzard maybe not advisable if you were doing a blizzard lalo but blizzard dragloon absolutely Absolutely, you could get away with it. I mean, having said that, with a Blizzard Lolo, you could probably get away with it if you were planning on using your heroes to perhaps sui in towards here and then through to the Town Hall. If you could do that, 
well let's face it guys look at the path that you've got really clean working down through here so yeah that would be a blizzard on that base pretty op i'm a fan now we're on to the yeti blimp so i mean yeti blimps have got a different dynamic to them to blizzards blizzards as i mentioned before are all about getting that chain value about getting those huge huge impact chains onto uh, structures that are possibly beyond the reach of their immediate vicinity the yeti is a little bit different so the yeti mites do sort of give some of the value that super wizards have in that they can go over walls and they're a little bit ranged but you don't want to bank on that really with a yeti blimp you're looking at immediate area of effect so i'm looking around here we've already done base identification so we're not going to go through that again but what do we want? What value do we want from a Yeti Blimp? Or what's realistic, more to the point? So the problem with Yeti Blimps is if you drop them anywhere near your Queen, the RC, or the King, they're going to get pulled in by those heroes. If they're within range, those heroes will target, and those Yetis will stop hitting defences. They'll try and take out the hero, and it won't end well for the Yetis. It never does. So guys, just try and avoid them if you can. So that kind of restricts us. It doesn't kind of restrict us, it massively restricts us actually, actually to where we can drop them. Um, I think the only two realistic places to maybe send in the Yeti Blim would be either into this compartment here, or into... where's the RC reach? Into this compartment here, but drop it just short of the Eagle. I think they're the two options that we've got. So our options here are Eagle, Air Defense, Cannon, Warden... Probably Archer Tower and Expo. Or we can look to take down Archer Tower, Cannon, Bomb Tower, Single Inferno, and a Wizard Tower. Maybe the Air Defense too, if we're lucky. So it depends on what attack you're going for as to which value you'd want to go for. So if you're doing something that's um, using super heavy troops, you'll perhaps want to take out the Single Inferno because that's the most likely to take those troops out pretty easily if you're going for something that's more swarmy so lalo or maybe even a dragoon to be honest or a drag bat maybe the eagle's the choice for you then again if you're looking at drag bat guys i suppose your main focus is actually going to be wizard towers wizard towers are probably the bane of drag bat so a little curveball for you if you were doing a drag bat perhaps even though it's right next to the king your value would be to path the blimp over here and drop it right on top of this multi inferno try and take out the multi the wizard tower and the cannon as quickly as possible but we're going to focus on what would be a more generic sort of attack so i'm thinking that maybe the best value for us would be to take out the eagle artillery compartment so let's go for it let's see what happens let's see if we can get a full takedown of that compartment and just bear in mind guys that we do take a rage spell in with our yeti blimps you don't always have to but for me i prefer to get that guaranteed impact so that's just that's just my preference that's what i go for so we've got the coco hound ready we want to drop the blimp probably around the lab to get it angled in right the coco hound blimp and let's Pre-rage and drop the blimp. Okay, okay, air defense is down. Eagle goes down. Yetis are doing a nice job here, actually. They are clearing out most of that area. I think the only thing left is going to be the ground expo. So, yeah, the only thing left over is the ground expo. Not a huge deal. Ideally, I would have liked to have taken it out, but the scatter shot over at 12 o'clock, unfortunately, took out the pups before they could bounce over to it. Maybe if my rage was placed a little bit higher, possibly I could have got the expo. But either way, that's not bad value. The eagle's gone down. We took out an air defense. Happy days. I'm fine with that. And that'll be pretty useful if you're looking to do, I don't know, potentially maybe maybe a dragoon. So if you were to do a dragoon from here, you've carved out a corner of the base. You've got some fairly loose pathing. I mean, honestly, that would even work for an e-drag attack. Now I'm looking at it. E-drags, um, I mean, I won't go into the ins and outs of E-drags, but you can afford to spread them a little bit more than you would with normal dragons, just because you want that chain, you want that mass damage spread across the entire base. You don't want them all in one place, otherwise you will probably not time fail, but you'll probably end up 
with very few e drags left by the end of it because once they bunch together, scatter shots, uh, multi infernos, the queen, any, anything that can deal heavy damage or splash damage is going to go to town on them. But yeah, not bad. Yeti blimp on that base, not bad. I kind of prefer the blizzard though, if I'm completely honest with you. Okay, so the final attack that we're focusing on, or the final blimp, is going to be super archers. It's a lot of fun, guys, trust me. If you can make it work, it can get tons of value. And we're going to do our best to make it work. So it's different to Super Wizards. And with Super Wizards, you can, I mean, we saw it. We dropped the blimp in here. And the chain value will bounce off structures, go left, it'll go right, it'll go up, it'll go down, it'll go wherever. As long as it's a building nearby, you'll get the chain. Super Archers are more linear. So if we dropped the Super Archer blimp here, for example, the shots would go duh, 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 all over the place. It'd be directional shots rather than chains. So if we went for the eagle as the first target, for example, it'd go through the eagle into the warden. Not bad. Not bad. One thing to keep in mind, and this is kind of key with super archers, because you use a clone spell, you use your invisibilities, you use a rage, you're very heavy on the spells. Um, it's super expensive. And of course, because you're using the clone, you need to wait for the barbarians that are there to tank for any kind of bombs or whatever to move out of the way before you drop that clone in. Otherwise, it will end up cloning the barbs. And you don't want that. Who wants 45 barbs or however many come out of it? It's unnecessary and it won't, it won't add any value. We want the super archers to be cloned. So what we want to do, we want to send the blimp in rather than here. Because the barbs have got nowhere to go, it's going to make it impossible to get rid of them before we clone. So we need it in here, which is where we can make the area of drop invisible and the barbs will rush to the nearest defense and they'll get wiped out relatively quickly. So to land in there, we'll need to drop the blimp pretty much between the, yeah, between the barracks and the army camp over at 9 o'clock, I'd say. Okay, I think we can maybe get away with that. Let's give it a go. Let's give this a go and see what we can do. Send in some cocoa wings first of all, because again, we can, so why not? Okay, Blimp is going to make it. Nice. We'll drop it. I'm going to do that again, and I'm going to rage up this time. Now... We can clone. And we keep on cloning until we run out. I'm going to drop another rage in because I can. So more clone. More clone. That's the last of our clones. How much value did we get? So wait till all said and done. We got the CC pull, partial CC pull. Not great but not bad. So I'm going to pull the ice golem over here just so we can get a real clear look at what we've got. So we took out. Mm, not bad. Not bad at all. So we took out that huge area here. But to do that, what did it cost us? Two rage, seven invisibility, and a clone. Guys, that's 14 housing space. Is it? Yeah, that's 14 housing space. That's all of our spells to do that. Is it worth it on this base? No, I don't think the value is really there for it. I think that probably the best choice on this base, uh, maybe the Blizzard, maybe the Blizzard. Okay, I mean, Super Archers, you can see what they do, though. You can see the damage that they can cause. And although it wasn't amazing, it was still pretty solid. Alright, so the next base that we're going to hit is the one that you can see right now. And we're going to start the cycle again and go with a blizzard. So we'll do a real quick rundown of base identification. Then we'll focus on where we send the blim. So we've got the town hall up here. It's, it's kind of difficult to get to with a blizzard. The angle that you would come in at to get to it, you're not going to get much additional value. So I would probably rule out the town hall takedown. Um, what else have we got? We've got scatter shots either side. We've got the eagle down at six. Infernos. And the expos are symmetrical here, 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 and here. So, okay. What do we want as value? It depends whether you're doing a Lolo or a Dragloon, to be honest. 
So Lalo is probably the most common attack with uh, Blizzard. So we'll focus on it as if we're doing a Lalo. And what am I wanting to do? What am I wanting to do? I think if I was doing a Lalo, the biggest threat here is probably going to be that core multi and your two sweepers. And of course you've got some value around it. So potentially the queen, potentially the RC, depending on which way the super wizards go, of course. And the CC as well. So you could theoretically take out this entire area here. You could then potentially again, just like the last time we talked about Sui right at the start of the video, you could potentially look to Sui the town hall with your heroes. Uh, yeah, I think that could work. I think that could work. But the obstacle here is getting the blimp into the core. So how would you do it? Okay, so we've got sweepers pointing left. Sweeper pointing to the right. And if we look at the safe zone between the two sweepers, so that one there and this one is down here. So theoretically, we'd need to come in with the blimp somewhere in this area. It needs to come in somewhere through there. Problem is that although it's a dead zone, you've got no idea, just like I haven't, what traps are going to be in that area. Now, normally, we'd resort to using a Coco Hound. And that Coco Hound, fantastic, amazing, because they will tank, not forever, but at least for a few seconds. It buys you plenty of precious seconds for that blimp to make it through. Problem here is, as you will remember, the air defense location, right here, right here, right here, and right here. Really, really bad for Coco Hounds, because what it's going to mean is that you're going to have to start the blimp from, say, I don't know, here, for example. The blimp will start here. Your Coco Hound's just going to go there. It's going to go right there. Is it going to add any value? Yes, a little bit. A little bit of value. So what it's going to do is it's going to soak up shots from the Archer Tower initially, the Air Defense, the Single Inferno, and that Archer Tower there. Your blimp is then going to path through and make it here. Which is... Actually, is it going to make it here? Hmm... Maybe we drop the blimp a little bit lower down, actually. So you probably start the blimp from about here, um, which is fine. So you've got the single Inferno tanked for at least momentarily. The only problem is, guys, that you don't know if there's going to be any traps hidden away. Sort of maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, maybe even here. And if there is, if the Seeking Air Mines or Nado's there, this blimp is going to be in big trouble. But guys, what we're going to do, we're going to stop talking about the theory and go into practice. And let's give this base a go right now. Okay. So, I'm going to start off with a couple of Coco Loons, actually, because... Why not? Hound. Blimp. Hey, okay, Hound, pick up the single. Hound did pick up the single. Is the Blimp going to make it? That's the million dollar question. It is going to make it. The blimp did actually make it, guys. So what value are we getting here? That's the next question, isn't it? That's what we really want to know. <clears throat> are we going to get the value to make it worthwhile doing a blizzard? Queen goes down. We actually damaged the town hall as well. So if we look at the overall value that we got here. So we'll break it down. We took out... All around here. The court is gone. Town Hall's activated. So this bit of the base, I'm just scribbling on the screen here, embracing my inner child, is completely gone. So you look at all of that gone. If you can then sue into the town hall, take the town hall down with your heroes, you've got a beautiful, beautiful path for whether you choose Blizzard Drags or Blizzard Lalo, doesn't really matter. Because you've got such a clean path to work around from... In fact, let me get rid of the scribbling on the screen. The pathing would be around here. Or vice versa. It doesn't matter which way you go. Um, one thing I would point out is that if the eagle was to one side, if it was to the left or the right, you would usually start on the side that the eagle's closest. Just because the eagle's a massive threat. And you want to take that down as early as possible. Right, okay, let's check this out using a Yeti Blimp. 
Right, so the Yeti blimp on this one, I'm feeling like it's probably going to need to go to the same location as the Blizzard did. Just because it's such good value there. Both sweepers, the multi-inferno, CC pull as well. Uh, it just seems like a golden opportunity to me. So I feel like we're going to go for it. We've already talked about the entry point. So we're going to go for it again and see what happens. Alright. A few balloons. We can afford to send them all in to be honest. I know it's a bit unrealistic to do that. But whatever. I never said I was realistic guys. Beautiful. Blimp is making it. It's making it. It's making it. And it makes it. So Blimp lands. We've got the CC pull. We've got the Multi Inferno down. We've got the CC. It's pulled out. But this is a trashy CC. It makes it difficult to get rid of. So what value have we got here? So we've got... I'm not even sure if that's a full CC pull, to tell the truth, guys. I'm not even sure. Let's have a look. Let's just drop my king down just to take a look to see what's coming down. No, because I know there's headhunters in there, so we didn't even pull the full CC out there, guys. So we've got a partial CC pull. We got the multi-inferno. We got, well, we got everything else defensively in the core. We got expo and expo. Okay. It's not bad value, guys. It's not bad. And the one plus to doing the Yeti Blimp over and above the Blizzard is that you're only using a Rage. With the Blizzard, of course, you're using a Rage plus four Invisibilities. So doing it this way, you are sparing yourself four housing space of spells. I mean, it, it depends on what you can do with those four housing space worth of spells to help try and catch up with the damage you would have got from the blizzard honestly i feel like this is still workable i do feel like it's still workable and if you were rocking a lalo for example here maybe those extra four spells would come in handy all you'd need to be mindful of is that you've still got um what you've still got the queen up you've still got the rc up um it'd make lalo in quite difficult Maybe a drag, maybe a drag would work better. I don't know. I don't know. Again, we're not going to talk about the actual follow-up part of the attack. We're just looking at value, and I do think it offered some value. So we took down essentially this area here plus the expo. That's not bad. It's not bad. It's not as good as the blizzard, but again, like I said, it's a lot cheaper than the blizzard. Economical guys. It's all about being efficient, isn't it? And now for the really fun one, guys. Super archers on this base kind of like this i'm excited about this i'm excited to see what happens and why because rather than super wizards again which do the chain value and you know you're gonna get shots bouncing around everywhere and it's gonna be kind of kind of chaotic with super archers you've got those linear shots so if we can land it say I don't know, about here you're gonna get shots going off here through the storage and because storages are heavy they're going to be shooting at the storages for a while and the storage will uh, storages will typically outlive any of the defenses behind them it'll go off here maybe even up here through the town hall i mean we'll find out soon enough i guess but yeah i'm excited about this so let's give it a go and see what we can get so as before i'm going to be quite liberal with my tanking for the blimp just because i want to make sure it gets there of course so Whatever, you won't drop that many balloons in a real life scenario. I'm aware of that. Okay, 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 okay. Limp drop. Drop another invisi. We'll rage. We'll clone. We'll invis. We'll invis again. So those shots from the archers are pretty devastating. I'm going to drop a rage again and another invis. And that's all of our invisies gone. Did it live up to the hype? Hell yeah, it did. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Let me do the usual drop an ice golem in just to pull the CC away so we're not getting clouded with... Random, random troops lying around. So what have we taken out here? Gosh, that is crazy. That is crazy. So we've taken out... I'm just trying to draw a good line around it all. Wow. 
So we've taken out all of this, all of this. Again, I'm just filling it in. I'm scribbling over it just so we can say this part of the base is erased. And I'm sure, guys, I mean, I know there's no spells left, granted. No spells left, so whatever you do is going to have to be spell free. I'm sure you could probably finish that base off without spells, right? I'm sure you could. I'm sure you could. I mean, a drag hit would probably do the job. You could, again, we've talked about this before, see the town hall, send the dragons in. And although you've got three air defenses, no, all four air defenses, sorry, still standing, your RC could easily deal with one or two of them. Your, in fact, the RC, I'm going into detail here, which I said I wouldn't do, but just as an example, you could drop your RC in over here, take out that air, air, take out that air defense and probably everything else in this area. Maybe not the single inferno, but not far off. But imagine all of that was gone. You could then probably find a way of manipulating the series so it goes around here and into the town hall. You'd probably get both of those air defenses too. So... And I may be being ambitious here, guys, and you probably think, Big Vale, you've been ridiculous now. But imagine if all of that was gone as well. What you're left with? Not much. Not much at all. That would be pretty phenomenal. I really like that. The Super Archer blimp on that base, top marks from me. Okay, so now onto the final base, and we go back to the beginning of the cycle, and we start on Blizzard. All right, so again, quick base identification. Town Hall is here. Air defense, air defense, air defense, air defense. Got the Eagle here. Juicy multi Inferno, the only multi here. If you're doing a Lolo, you probably want that gone. Clan Castle, we've got the Queen right here as well. Expo, Expo. Where's the RC? Where is the RC? RC's over here. And we've got our scatter shots here. So, okay. I'm looking around and the biggest congestion of high value targets is probably around here. So we've got the Multi Inferno, we've got the Expo, the Queen and the Clan Castle. They would be prime targets for me, I think. I'd like to get them down and theoretically, if we could take them all down, again, we've got the makings of nice pathing for probably a Blizz drag on this occasion, but I guess Blizz Lolo could work if your Sui worked correctly. But again, I mentioned earlier in the video, that's not what we're here for. So we're all about the actual blimp itself. So what I'm thinking is I could drop the blimp to land probably right on top of the queen. How would we do that? So if we angled it in, we could go right over the top of the air defense. That's actually nice pathing for us. It means the Coco Hound will have a for as long as the Coco Hound's going to be moving to the air defense, it's going to be tanking for the blimp. So I don't think I really need to talk about this one too much, to be honest, guys. Let's just rock and roll with it. Okay. So we got the... In fact, let's do a couple of Coco Leans first of all. Okay. Blimp's going over the top. Blimp is going over the top. And Blimp pops. Perfect. Perfect. CC is being dealt with very nicely here. So CC goes down. Can we get this queen down? I don't know if we can. Ooh, we don't quite get the queen down. We don't quite. But uh, I mean, maybe I could have manipulated the uh, uh, invisies a little bit better. Probably a fail on my part, to be honest. But look at the value. Again, we took out. And I'm going to draw the line of what we took out here just to help with the visual. We took out all of this. Yeah, when I draw the line, that is a huge, huge amount of the base taken out. That is, that is strong. That is very strong. So from here on in, again, you could start looking at where you could send your Sui in from. I'll let you guys figure that out. Maybe we can talk about series in the future video. But yeah, I'd say Blizzard on this base, that would be the right approach to take. Okay, so guys, I mean, I'm impressed actually. I'm super impressed by that. I did not expect quite so much value. But onto the Yeti blimp on this base. So as we've already talked about with Yeti blimps, it's not the same as a Blizzard. You've got that, um, you've got the 
immediate value that you're looking at. Where you're dropping the blimp is what you're looking at taking down. Anything that happens beyond that is kind of collateral and it it's not random as such. You can sort of manipulate your Yeti mites to go where you want them to by ensuring that the blimp is dropped in such a way that the closest structure to the Yeti mites would be the one you want to target, but that's really difficult and it's not always possible. So we're going to be focusing on trying to take out immediate value. Now, where would that immediate value be for us? I'm kind of feeling like if we want a CC pull, if we want immediate value, we're probably going to need to be dropping the blimp over the queen again. So, yeah, if we go for the queen, if we go over here. Again, it's going to be about taking out this area. Same as before, really. Same as with the blizzard. Um, I feel like this is the right way to go. So what we'll do, we'll not talk about it. We'll just go for it and see what value the Yeti blimp gives us. Okay, a couple of Coco Loons just because we can. Blimp. And ready with the rage. Hopefully, the blimp will be able to take out the queen, too. Ooh, those yeti mites are going to take out the multi. But because the CC is it's actually causing us a lot of problems, the yeti mites tried to get to the scatter shot. <sighs> no way. Not a hope in hell. So, guys, did we get a, pull, a full CC pull that time? No, we did not. We didn't. So, it's... um. Loads of archers and loads of goblins, but uh, no full CC. So this is like a worst case scenario. It's not often you'll see people using trashy CCs like that. But if we look at the value that we managed to get here, if we look at the value that the Blizzard got, not Blizzard, Yeti Blimp got us, we're going to draw it out again. So... Mm -mm -mm. All of that. Not quite as much as the Blizzard. Not quite, but not far off. The only advantage to the Blizzard, of course, is you've got more potential to take out CC troops. Of course, those uh, Super Wizards, very, very effective with the chain value plus the initial shot is splash too. So those trashy troops, for example, will go down relatively easily. And the same goes if a Hound were to come out or, or whatever, really. Whatever comes out of that CC, a Blizzard can usually deal with it. And if it's a hound, even better, because the chain shots from the wizard, as long as there's a structure nearby, will bounce off and cause additional damage. So, Yeti Blimp, again, keep it in mind, we're using four less spells than we did with Blizzard. That's, that's good. That's actually good. That's really nice value. And it's not quite, as I said, not quite as good as the Blizzard. But it's not too far off, as long as you've got a easy way of dealing with the cc so maybe a poison if i brought a poison in with me perhaps i could have maybe got a tiny bit more value maybe not actually we'll never know because i'm not going to do it again with poison because what's the point but uh you know you get the idea i feel like the yeti blimp here freeing up four additional spells may be better value than the blizzard yeah i said it guys i said it Okay, and we're back around to Super Archers again, guys. This one, again, excites me a great deal. I think we can make magic happen with this. So, rather than with the Blizzard, where we're looking to try and take out value over here, I'm feeling with Super Archers, because of the type of damage they do and how long range it is, I feel like a great area to drop them in, and also taking into account that we have to get the Barbarians away from the Archers before the clone goes in, would be to drop them somewhere in this area here. So if we dropped them in here, we could get the barbs to run away, which is fine. We could also potentially take out, I mean, if we drop them, say, on the warden, let's say you'll get shots going that way, you'll have shots going that way, that way, that way, that way. So you're going to get shots going many different ways, and that's going to be a ton of potential value here. Like, masses of potential value i'm not sure what we'd even take out of it to be honest guys i'd have to do it to actually know but i i feel like this method this method could be mega effective again super expensive so the value that we get from it you have to take it all as relative to how much it costs you to use a yeti blimp or how much it costs you to use a blizzard let's give it a whirl guys let's see what we can do where do we need to drop the blimp to get it in to the town hall well 
not to the tap or to the warden. Okay, dark barracks. This is a useful tool, by the way, guys, if you're looking at setting blimp pathing. Just, I don't know. If anyone's got a computer, maybe you want to do this, maybe you don't. It's up to you. Up to you. But um, but yeah, I found it really, really helpful to visualize and help to show you guys the path that the blimp's going to be following. So, let's go. Again, we'll go with a few loons here just to try and soak up any potential dangers. Blimp. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it made it. Thank God. The blimp made it, guys. And now we can drop the clone. And let's see what these little babies get. Let's see what they can do. Do another rage. Another clone. Um, not clone. Invisibility. Drop another invisian. These archers have started to come in from the clan castle now. So maybe the value that we're getting isn't quite as good as it could have been if we'd stopped the clan castle from pouring out. But you see how they're dealing with the clan castle, actually. That's pretty effective. That's more effective than I thought it would be. As far as value on the base, though, guys, it's actually not more effective. It's not. So looking at what we've managed to take out, and again, we'll pull these little CC troops out of the way. So what did we get? We got a lot of trash buildings on the outside. So this is the value that we got. It's a massive island. But then you look at what's left. There's still a ton of heavy defense left. And I, I just don't feel like we got as much from that uh, super archer blimp as we did from our blizzard. Maybe from my yeti blimp as well. Given the uh, difference in spell cost, of course. So that uh, super archer blimp costs us all of our spells. The yeti blimp only costs us two spell housing space. You make up your own mind, guys. But for me, I feel like that on this base, the Super Archer Blimp actually wasn't that effective. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this served in some way to educate you on the use of blimps. Whether it's don't do it like BV or, you know what, BV's onto something here. Um, so guys, if it did help in any way, please do let me know in the comments. And also hit that like button. And if you do love my content, as I hope you do, smash that subscribe button too. But for now, guys, much love from me. Big Bail is out.